So Fourier transforms are cool. In fact, they're so cool that it would be impossible for me to cover everything about them in a video of any reasonable length. So instead, let's try to give them an intuitive description so that we understand them better when we inevitably see them in the future. So let's say we have a sine wave that looks something like this. Obviously, we can represent it mathematically as, well, a wave in real space. As we modify the frequency, the wave becomes more or less wavy, if you know what I mean. At the same time, in frequency space, we will always see one defined peak, which is representative of the frequency of the wave. To me, this is already kind of cool. We can tell exactly what frequency we have simply by switching to frequency space. Now, what happens when we start introducing more sine waves? Well, the image in real space becomes incredibly complicated, but the frequency space image doesn't really change that much. Instead of one peak related to one wave, we now see three different distinct peaks for each individual wave in real space. If we change the frequency of any one of our waves, the corresponding peak in frequency space moves left or right. This means that we can take any complicated mess of waves and easily determine their components. The trick is that we need some sort of special transformation that allows us to flip back and forth between real and frequency space. This transformation is known as a Fourier transform. To be honest, the first time I saw it, it looked like a complicated mathematical mess to me. So here it is, in all of its glory. Because I find real space just a little bit more intuitive, let's start with the inverse Fourier transform, the one that allows us to flip from frequency space back to real space. Some function in real space is equal to the integral over all frequency space of some function in frequency space times e to the i2 pi k x, where k is your frequency component and x is your real space component. Now for the forward Fourier transform, the one that allows us to flip from real space to frequency space. Some function in frequency space is equal to the integral over all real space of some function in real space times e to the negative 2 pi i x k. As I mentioned, it's not particularly obvious how these formulas work, but it becomes a little bit more obvious when we make a basic substitution e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Sure, the sine is still in imaginary space, which is kind of complicated, but everything becomes simpler now that we can actually see the waves. Basically, everyone comes to terms with these equations in different ways. For me, it becomes a little bit easier when we put them into a form that I can program. To do this, we need to discretize them in the form of a discrete Fourier transform. Truth be told, it doesn't really change the equations that much. We just change the integrals to sums and put some sort of normalization factor in front of the real space formula. However, this changes things drastically in my mind because now all we're doing is a bunch of matrix multiplications, which is something I can totally understand. The most important thing to remember about Fourier transforms is what we said at the start. They allow for us to flip between real and frequency space, which means we can take some overly complicated signal in real space and split it up into its constituent waves in frequency space, which can be easier to understand in many different situations. For this reason, I can pretty much guarantee that we'll be using the Fourier transform at some point in the future on this channel. So here's the thing. Nearly every application of Fourier transforms that I know of happen on some computer system somewhere around the world in the form of discrete Fourier transforms. Unfortunately, discrete Fourier transforms require matrix multiplications which are prohibitively slow. So instead, programmers speed them up in the form of fast Fourier transforms or FFTs, which will definitely be covered in a future video. For now, I'd like to briefly apologize for my absence from YouTube over the past few months. This was in part because of personal reasons, and also because I've been working on some cool things in the background. One of those things you saw today as some sort of interactive visualization library, which was used for the Fourier transform visualization. Now, there's another project that I'm working on in the background, but I'm not quite ready to unveil it yet, so forgive me for now, but I will talk about it in a future video. Until next time, I'd like to thank you so much for coming in, and I will see you next time. Toodles!